I gotta tell you, I decided almost 20 years ago I wanted to be a teacher. I thought I want to be a teacher. And I, I can't help believing that it's because of an early influence I had. I think I was like six years old when my first grade class went to check out books, and I walked right straight over and I checked out PT 109. <laughs> That's about John Kennedy. I gotta tell you something about John Kennedy. He saw things before they happened. One of the things John Kennedy said was, we need innovation and we need creativity. If we're going to be leaders in this world, we've got to have innovation and we've got to have creativity. So that's cool. We're going to be a world power. It's got to come from that. I thought, oh, I've got to do something. I've got to, I'm going to be a teacher. And I'm going to make lessons that no one's ever seen before. They're going to be like the best lessons. And they're going to be like, yes! Now that's a lesson! This was my big plan. That's why I decided to become a teacher. Unlike everybody else who decided they were going to become a teacher because of the money. <laughs> Some of us made decisions for other reasons. See, here, here was my thought. What if? What if I can actually like, make a difference? What if I can say something in a way that somebody pays attention and they go on and they do something they didn't know they could do? What if? I got to work with people who were capable of doing things they had no idea they were doing. What if there's someone in this audience right here, right now, who's a genius, who's an incredible problem solver? Because I happen to think that that's what this country needs. And I'll tell you the truth. I have never been so proud of this country as I am when I hear that someone from the United States came up with an innovation. You know what I'm talking about? You see, that's what this country is known for. We're known for innovation and we're known for creativity. So here I am, standing in the middle of my classroom with these golden lessons, right? And I've got them. I'm like, you guys! And then guess what else? And they're like, yeah, for a little while. And then pretty soon I look out, and I'm still all excited. Can you believe that? Here's my kids. <laughs> like, hey, hey, you get up. Get up, don't you get this? This is really important stuff. They were like lifeless, sleeping, drooling on my desk in my classroom. I'm like, not in my room, you're not drooling. Get up! What? Do you like, not like history? Do you not like school? Like, no, it can't be. And it wasn't because you know what? There were places in the school they were awake. There were places in the school they did love, and it was in the gym. What? What's that all about? They're awake in the gym, but not in my class, so I'm walking back to my room, mad at the PE teacher. <laughs> I hate PE teachers. Kids always love PE teachers. What's that about? Then my idea comes to me, wait. I'm gonna steal from the PE teacher. I'm gonna go back upstairs to my class and teach all of my core stuff, only I'm gonna make them get up and pretend like I'm the PE teacher every 10 to 15 minutes. It's a true story, I really did that. I said, that's it! Get up! We're moving! We're gonna play! Then I started doing the research, and I thought, wait, wait, this is, this is awesome. The research, it turns out, says that when you get up and you move, listen to me carefully, you increase your blood flow. That's good, by the way. <laughs> your blood flow delivers dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, all the chemicals that allow you to focus, pay attention, and behave nicely, even have manners, and stop yourselves from doing things you shouldn't necessarily do in a classroom. <laughs> They could learn, they could think, they could process. So I keep doing this research, I keep doing this research, and here's what I come up with, here's what I find. It turns out it's like magic in your brain. You get your kids up and you move them, and it turns out they're on grade level. That's what the research says. The research is really depressing. It says, if you don't move, you are not on grade level. People who are obese, children who are obese, are eight to 10 points below grade level. Obesity means we are not going to be reaching grade level. Not bad teaching. <gasps> wow. Do you guys ever shocked at how we're always told, oh no, kids aren't doing well in school. It must be those teachers. Get rid of the teachers. You guys, it turns out if we don't move, our kids don't hit grade level. Did you hear that? If we get them moving, they do. And in the event that you're a little bit annoyed with me right now because I'm talking about obesity and not moving and maybe you don't exercise kind of like you thought, I just want you to know I'm with you. It makes me mad too. I'd be like, oh, shut her up. Who does she know? I haven't gone to the gym in a while. So just want you to know I feel your pain because that was me 10 years ago when I started doing this. 
I weighed 50 pounds more then than I do now, and there I am doing all the research, and then I started teaching classes. I started teaching people who were interested enough to listen. I said, you guys, it turns out when we move, we can think and process and focus. And I'm doing this research looking like this, and I felt really stupid. I thought, you guys, okay, just don't, don't, don't do what I do. Just do what I say, okay? But slowly but surely, I realized I started doing things differently, and as I did it differently, I started to lose weight. And as I'm losing weight, I'm finding more and more research that says really cool things like this. You don't even have to be physically fit. You know how sometimes getting physically fit takes a while? You ever been overwhelmed before? You're like, 50 pounds? I can't do 50 pounds, right? <laughs> if you're thinking, oh, like I don't have enough to do in my classroom, now she's saying I need to get my kids physically fit, now she's saying something like we need to be innovative and creative, Yes! <laughs> but you don't have to wait for physical fitness. All you have to do is get moving, because you see, Charles Hillman has now done the research that says this. When we get our kids up on test day, and we get them moving, they hit grade level, not even physically fit. Whether they're obese, whether they're inactive, whether they spend way too much time watching television, you just get them up and you get them moving. 20 minutes seems to counteract the effects of obesity in inactivity like magic, right away, that fast. You get up and you get moving. Same goes for when you get home from work and you're tired. Any of you who are ever worked a full-time job in teaching, I have to tell you the most tired you will ever be is on a Friday afternoon at 4 p.m. <laughs> All I wanted to do was go home and fall face first on my sofa where I could drool, one of those kinds of naps, like a incredible drool like my kids, I saw them doing on my, so I'm not gonna do it. I gotta bring movement into my classroom. You see, when I bring movement into my classroom, when I bring movement into my lectures, when I bring movement into my life, and not even that much, the research starts with just two minutes. You get up and move for two minutes and you increase your blood flow, that's your focus, that's your attention, that's your energy. That's the difference between life and death in a meeting. <laughs> That's the difference between getting into big trouble in a classroom and being able to behave like you're supposed to. Because when we don't move, we start making weird choices. When we don't move, we start to find our movement all on our own. What if, what if my students weren't paying attention just because they weren't getting up and they weren't moving? What if the research today offers us the idea that when you get up and move, I'm not even saying wait for physical fitness. That might take a few weeks or months. What if when you get up and you move, it changes your blood flow so fast that when you sit back down, you can pay attention to a bright idea? And what if you have a genius in your classroom? What if you have a student who's gonna write that book, who's gonna solve that problem? What if you have somebody, what if you work with someone who's going to make a connection because they got up and they moved? What if to get this country online for the 21st century, what we needed to do was get our kids up and get them moving? What if instead of being overwhelmed, because you guys, I would get overwhelmed because I listen to everything we're told, the United States, we're not on grade level, right? That's freaky. <laughs> the United States, we're behind everyone in the world and everything, especially standardized test scores. Hey, I got news for you. We've never been known for standardized test scores. That's an old dream that never happened, you guys. You know what this country's known for? That's right. We're known for freedom, innovation, freedom to innovate, freedom to be creative, to problem solve and become those world leaders. When something goes wrong in this country, you know who they call? When there's something goes wrong in the world, we call this country. They call here, not because of our standardized test scores, but because we have the know-how and we have the thought process. And I'm afraid we're losing it in our past years because of our push towards things that really don't matter. I care about what matters. Don't you care about what matters? What matters is our ability to think, our ability to process, our ability to control and stabilize our moods and not have to take drugs to, to feel good or happy. Getting up and moving is our own little bit of Prozac. And Dr. John Rady has done the research in his book, Spark, that says this, if you guys want what really matters in this country, get them up and get them moving. Starting our day with a little bit of movement means our kids are scoring number one in the world in science. Did you know that? Did you know that right here in this country, at Naperville, a middle school, a middle class high school, 
these guys were first in the world in science, not at the end of the, of the international comparisons. And by the way, there's no international comparison because other countries don't test all their kids. We do. Internationally, they test their test takers, the ones who do really well. In this country, we test everyone. We don't care if you speak the language or not. We just say it like this. Read them the directions again, <laughs> louder. <laughs> That's your comparison? We got so many things going on in the world, we're told we don't have the STEM, we don't have science, technology, engineering, and math. This is what they tell us? We don't have this kind of stuff, and the way we're gonna get it is more preparing for tests that really don't measure what we think we're measuring? Come on. What if we pay attention to the research and what we find is that Rady's right, that at this school where get, they got their kids physically fit, at this school where they got their kids physically fit, they were number one in science. It gets better. California, PE for Life does a study with almost a million kids. You know what they found? The more physically fit our kids get, the more, the more levels they reach in physical fitness tests, the highest their scores in number one math, number two reading. In seventh grade, they looked again. The more physically fit our kids get, the highest scores in math and number two reading. In ninth grade, same story. The more physically fit we get, the highest in math, number two reading. Was it? What was it? They wanted from us. They want science. They want math. They want reading. This isn't more money on new programs. This isn't more homework. Did you catch that? Yeah. This is get moving. This is research-based. The jury is out on the effects of traditional homework. The jury is not out on physical fitness. We're pretty clear on this. When we get physically fit, it gives us the fuel to our frontal cortex so we can think and process and focus. It gives us the chemicals that we have to have so that we can remember. Do you or do you not love your memory? <laughs> you better, because you will miss it when it's gone. We are a use it or lose it being. You get up and you move and you're not gonna believe what's gonna happen. And I'll be honest with you, it's so easy to get overwhelmed. It is so easy to say, I got so much to do, I've gotta do this. Now I'm supposed to be in charge of helping this country be number one again. I've gotta start the STEM, science, technology, engineering and math all by myself. Yes. Because it turns up you get up and you move your kids. It turns out you get up and you move your own children, the ones you own personally. It turns out <laughs> you move your body and it is your brain that is thinking and focusing and processing differently. And I'll be real honest with you. When I lost those 50 pounds, I was overwhelmed. So I thought, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't, I just can't, so uh, I'm, I'm gonna do it like this. Today's the day I make healthy choices. Today. Today's the day I make healthy choices. Today is the day that I'm just gonna not eat that and I'm gonna eat more of this. Today is the day I'm just gonna get up. And maybe today is your day, because the day is not over yet. Today is the day you get up. Today is the day you move. Today is the day you get people around you to move. You could call your employer and you say, hey, what if we bring movement into the workplace? Today's the day you call a principal, you call a, a teacher, you say, hey, we need more recess. Can we have just one more recess? Today is the day you tell the family, you guys, tomorrow we're gonna get up and walk for 20 minutes. They're gonna love it. <laughs> and if they like it, sign them up for a 5K. <laughs> just turn off the TV for 20 minutes. And maybe you can make magic happen. Because I don't know who you are, and you don't either. Maybe you have that great solution to a problem. Maybe you're the one who's going to write that book. Maybe you're the person who's going to figure out how to stop global warming or the, the cure to cancer. With movement, we have creativity and innovation. With movement, we can think out of the box. That's what this country is known for. We want leaders. Let's start creating them. Let's bring the greatness back to this country by bringing back movement and physical fitness as a matter of course, not a matter of choice. Thank you for giving me your time today.